following maintenance and repair videos will apply to the entire line of your Sisma laser welding machines. So while you're watching these maintenance videos, don't be too concerned if the machine you're working on is a little different than the one in the video. I assure you the internal components are the same. Okay, let's take a look at doing the water maintenance here. First thing we want to do is turn off the machine and disconnect from power. Turn this red switch. Let's disconnect the power supply. And we'll remove this side panel here. You can use the 2.5 metric hex wrench. Now inside here, we want to take off the cap for the fill port. And also we want to remove this red cap to allow air into the system, which will help us drain the water tank. You can use this key set here to help remove the red cap. You just fit it over and press down on the black plastic and pull out the red tab. If you don't have the key set, you can do this with your fingers. And you just hold down that black plastic and pull out the red tab. To drain the water tank, you're gonna need the drain hose and a container to catch the water. This drain hose has a little white connector which plugs right into the back of the machine. The connector plugs right into the plastic valve, clicks into place, and the water starts draining. Now in case you're missing this drain hose, you can insert a small skinny hex wrench inside of there, depress the plastic spring, and it will drain. However, this hose makes it a lot easier. Okay, now that all the water is out of the machine, we can disconnect the hose. Now, let's go ahead and check the water pump filter located right here in the fill port station. You might need an adjustable wrench to get this cap off. It's on pretty tight. So you can turn and if it feels like it's really strong, you keep going, hold that in place and it starts to come loose. We want to check this filter for any sort of debris inside of that filter. If there's any plastic parts or metal parts, definitely reach out immediately to service and let us know. Otherwise, if it's just some small particulates, you can take this over to a steamer, clean it off, and reuse the same filter. This filter looks pretty good, so we're just going to go ahead and put it right back in the same way we pulled it out. Replace our cap, and make sure that's good and tight. Let's give it a couple of turns here with the wrench. We don't want to over tighten, so that feels pretty good there. Now, let's replace the deionizing water filter. It's located right here in the back of the machine. We just need to take this cap off using the provided tool key. We're gonna use the hex side of this tool key, place it over this cap, and go ahead and loosen. You can clean up any water that spills out with paper towel. We have a little exhaust fan back here, so let's just dry off any of these uh, drops of water off of the grill. You can see the deionizing filter here inside. There's a little hole at the end of this filter, right there. You're gonna use the small end of this Allen key to insert into that black hole. Twist, and you're just gonna pull out the filter. Here's our replacement deionizing filter. We want to take it out of the plastic. And let's inspect it here. We want to make sure these O-rings are sitting properly on the little grooves. And that the caps are in place. And this is a normal fill level for the resin. We can insert it either direction into the holder. Now we can put the cap back on. We want to make sure you put this cap on without cross-threading, and make sure you tighten it all the way on so we don't get any water leaks. Use the provided hex tool to tighten the cap back down. I want to make sure it's good and snug so that that O-ring between the cap and the holder is compressed and we don't get any leaks. Now we can start filling up the machine again with fresh distilled or deionized water. So let's go ahead and insert this hose into the fill port. We'll open our fresh bottle of distilled water. And we have a viewing window down here where we can see the water level. We want to make sure we fill above the max level. Notice we have that little small black hose that's open. A couple of drops of water might come out of there, but that's good. We want that open so the air comes out of the line while we fill it up with water. 
This uh, water tank holds about three and a half liters of distilled water. That's about three quarters of a gallon of water. And now that we've filled the tank with water, we're gonna turn the machine back on and do our water ejection procedure. So let's go ahead and reconnect our power supply. We'll turn the machine on and eject the water, and then we can finish with the water maintenance. So before we turn the machine on, let's make sure that we have the key in the off position and go ahead and turn on the red power switch. We'll wait for the machine to start up and come up to the working page and then we can continue with the procedure. To do this water ejection procedure, you can either have a partner help you by holding the catch container or to turn on the key switch, or you'll see here how you can do it on your own. You want to point this small hose into an empty or partially filled container and with your right hand, fitting it through the armhole or the front opening of your machine. You just want to turn the key switch on. Turn the key switch off. And the water is going to keep ejecting for about five or six seconds and will stop on its own. Once it finishes, go ahead and put the red cap back in. And now we want to top off that water tank. Okay, so that's the water ejection procedure. Depending on the process that you're doing, regular water maintenance, replacing a water pump or a flow meter, you might have to do that procedure a couple of times. But now that we're set here, let's go ahead and put our covers back on the fill port station. And uh, we're almost done. Okay, so we throw on that water cap and we can place the cover for the fill port station. All right, let's check out the maintenance counters and we'll be good to go. All right, let's reset the maintenance counter on the software. Let's go into menu, special functions, machine status. See here, it gives us the total time on the machine, the pump time, and the next service time. Typically, you'll see your pump time close to your next service time, and it'll prompt for water maintenance. However, you also want to do water maintenance at least once a year, even if you don't get close to this service time. So let's touch maintenance, change water and filter, and this screen tells us that we need a password to confirm that the water has been changed. Let's touch here and enter the password 0445. Enter. After we enter the password, the software tells us to go through that water ejection procedure and also tells us to turn off the key. So let's go ahead and follow those instructions, even though we've already done that ejection procedure. First step here, it shows us to take off the rear panel on the water fill port station, and it highlights the small hose with the red connector in it. Let's go to the next page. Next, remove the red plunger from the small black hose. And once you have completed the water ejection procedure, be sure to fill the water tank back up to the max line. Once we have finished that procedure, we can go ahead and confirm on the software with the yes button. After turning the key on and off, and you've allowed for the water to come out of the hose, go ahead and put the red cap back into the hose. Now we can hit done. Okay, we're ready to work. We can check our machine counters uh, to check the status of the water pump for one final verification. Menu, special functions, machine status. So the next service time is about a thousand hours ahead of the current pump time. Now we've completed the water maintenance procedure and you can continue working with your laser machine.